So y'all probably know I'm into um, audio stuff mostly. Um, if I'm not playing music or writing it or dreaming it, I am uh, playing it on all kinds of different equipment. And here's some trash finds that uh, I've done videos on a couple of these. Uh, the Mackie, 2800 watts, down to four ohms, bridged. I fixed it, it had an overheating problem. The Carbon, I actually bought that used from a guy about 15 years ago. It had an overheating problem. I put a new fan in it and replaced a burned resistor. I don't know why it burned, but it's been running hard ever since then. That was about five, six, seven years ago. Um, let's see. The This is one that I have not been into yet is the because uh, I had to steal the cooling fan out of this one to put in here because uh, the uh, Mackie, of course, is going to be higher quality, um, I, I believe anyway. I guess 1.3K is 1,300 watts. I don't know why it's so big and so heavy because I don't believe it had any more current than the uh, Mackie here, which is the M2600. That's 2.6K um, and it's high current design. And if, I don't know if you can see that. I've got low lighting over here. Anyway, um, a few little cool things I found. I've got three or four of these at the scrapyard. They work. Just to use the fans for cooling um, amps and stuff. The squirrel cage are my favorite. Uh, I gave a couple to a friend of mine, the electrical engineer, Dan, and he's using them for something. And Several of those UPS power supplies, which you can dual purpose, uh, you can take the, um, this, if, if the what, only thing that goes wrong with those usually is the, um, uh, the lead acid batteries in them go bad. Um, so what you do is you can repurpose it to put in your car and run the 12 volts in from there and use it as a uh, power inverter. So he's going to use that in his van. He has a nice new van for that. So I wanted to show you some new finds we've got at the... Um, Scrapyard. If you see anything you like here, yes, there's videos on it. Uh, I've got like 150 videos, but here's uh, some new finds. I got Scrapyard I have not plugged in yet. Um, the last stuff all worked. The Fisher. Um, the glare is probably not that great. It is a integrated amp on top. It doesn't, what's the number on it? Don't know. Um, anyway, these are usually pretty good if you get a good one. Uh, if you watch way some of Wayback Tech's videos, he's got some of these that he really he likes. He's got like 97 uh, of the uh, Fisher stuff. Anyway, this is a monster um, I got at the scrapyard. And someone's cut the power cord on it because that's what they do so no one will scavenge because what they don't know is is that I that won't slow me down any. So here's the cooler for the uh, output transistors back here. I thought that was pretty cool. Big monster. Uh, monolithic um, cooling uh, device there. Big guy on the back. I haven't cleaned them up or anything. Um, they were sitting outside. This thing um, says that it's um, pretty powerful. There's speaker A and B. Um, this is going to be your other... Hang on. 18 volt max. Oh, that's for, to hook it up to the other uh, stuff in the in the circuit, whatever. This thing says here that it's Japanese 550 watts consumption. That's pretty crazy. Uh, so this thing must have some juice to it. Um, they do have the direct connectors here you can use instead of RCAs for if you're using Fisher stuff. And uh, looks like a pretty good deal there. I did wipe this off just a little bit, but it's uh, uh, they're out of California, but this Japanese stuff is just so awesome. But that's a lot of consumption. Just to let you know, like this Mackie amp here is just when it's sitting at idle with, with these uh, detented all the way down. This thing pulls like 240 watts. <laughs> so um, that thing may actually have some juice to it. Uh, second in line tonight that I got the same with a setup, and there could have been more, I don't know, was the Fisher uh, CD player. Um, it is uh, model number, I don't know, it doesn't say it's probably on the back. I'll, I'll, we'll get into that later. But anyway, um, it just needs to be cleaned up a little bit, and I'm sure it works. As you know, most CD players that were older than about 15 years from, from the time they were made up to about 15 years ago, you could pretty much find one laying around at a, at a scrapyard or anywhere and clean the disc very carefully on top with um, alcohol and, on, and spray it out with compressed air or something, and they'll pretty much run if you lube the uh, gear and mechanism up and stuff. There you have the two things you have to you have the actual um, movement of the laser and then you have the uh, skate or the uh, um, you know the magazine that runs in and out so if you clean that up and reset it usually those things will always run I also found a uh, pioneer CD recorder still has the original stickers on it and a lot of times these are very sensitive to dust if you get some dust on them they're not going to run um, but this is pretty it looks like a pretty decent one I'm pretty excited to uh, try it out it's got the um, analog in and then it's got of course digital in 
Um, I'm gonna gonna try this out and do some videos on this. It's for um, recordable and rewritable CDs, so you can actually unfinalize. I, I've had several CD writers. I don't really like to use the computer ones. It seems like these are a little better. And then it's got the SR, which means it runs with anything Pioneer. Um, Let's see. Also got the uh, Yamaha down here, which are which have a good uh, have a good name. This one's very dirty. Uh, it's uh, A, B, and C. This thing has a big transformer and it's heavy. It's supposed to be uh, Class A. It has an auto Class A button. I guess we'll, Mr. R. F. Burns will have to explain that to us. And then you can use it just as a workhorse. It has a power amp in um, straight up. The only thing I noticed so far is wrong with it is the um, nut is loose. This is a big chunk of aluminum, but the nut that holds the uh, pot on there and it's motorized is uh messed up and then uh, or it needs to be tightened um so i'm thinking there's probably a problem with this because i don't see why someone would get rid of this but and then inside of here you have a lot of different settings so this this was a pretty high quality device here uh pretty cool you don't have to have the remote to run all this stuff you know subsonic filter and stuff for your phonograph and then mono stereo so it's bridgeable and then uh, balance uh, loudness, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's got a lot of cool stuff in there. And then turnover frequency, I guess, would be uh, you, it, your adjustable frequency. You set it for whatever frequency, and then this will adjust uh, up and down. But this looked like a pretty good uh, machine there. So what I'm going to have to do is get off my lazy butt and get some of this stuff plugged in and do some videos. But thought you might like to see that. Uh, yes, the uh, sand studio stuff is uh, still working. It's out of service right now. We're running some other stuff. This is uh, something a friend gave me. You can put all your stuff from tape and run your CD player through this and put it all on your iPhone. It's got a USB conversion in it where, you, where it puts it all to digital to USB format and you can record it all into your iPhone. So that's kind of cool. It's not the highest quality uh, deck system, but it's never been used. And then of course the AU is still running. And I've got one channel fixed on the uh, model SX770 Pioneer. <clears throat> I've got one channel on that that needs to be fixed. There's a bunch of burned out parts. I'm thinking about sending that to Max Arcade or somebody to look at um, and then I'm in the middle of working on I'm just waiting for the belts to come in for the uh, Pioneer tape deck over here the one that goes with um, this uh, anyway I got it all fixed up I just get waiting for it it goes with this um, SA520 which is uh, Pioneer got this out of the junkyard it was full of water when I poured it out and it runs now this is not quite audio file stuff this is more of uh, a little below that, you know, but it's good stuff. And then, you know, I'm in a Sansui. And of course, you saw the video on the uh, CompU equalizer that I found. This, I also had to pour the water out of it. It had been rained on several times. And let's just do a little kind of look here and see if it does work. It has a bunch of settings where you can set four settings, presets, and then it's got a flat. And, you know, for good for recording, you set it and it. Okay, boss, I'll um, put it back where you had it without you even having to move your fingers now. I do have a more advanced setup than this, uh, made by Pioneer, excuse me, Kenwood, that uh, is digital. It has the presets where you, and it automatically digitally uh, puts them in there. Uh, but I swear, I think this one actually sounds better. It's the um, SE9. I need to do a dedicated video of it, I guess, one of these days, and of the inside, and the, I guess the gearing and how it's all made up inside. But so this setup is pretty simple. We got several inputs running into. Right now we're using this CD player. I've got about seven through the preamp on the Marantz because the Marantz is just so sweet into direct into the amp on here. So we can have a little bit of meters here, of course, but uh, I think it sounds a little bit cleaner through the AU217, but uh, got tired of using the um, DC powered amp in here. I'm gonna get that out of there. I just don't like it. I'm gonna use something different like, uh, well, I don't even know if I can reach it over here. I've got uh, a Pioneer um, power module over here in the window. Um, I'm probably going to use something like this whenever I get this repaired in that Marantz because I can't find the original Marantz. So this is um, a really good, almost no noise um, power amp here. It's like 40 watts per channel, but I've got some parts that have to be replaced. A couple of driver transistors are bad. I think what happened was the transistor here um, on the right channel shorted and it took a couple of capacitors. Um, resistors with it and the driver transistor anyway so I have one side working I just need to order some parts for that um, Nippon Chemico there you know that's uh, and all that good sensory stuff probably gonna replace those um, the, the bias trim pots there with uh, some better bias trim pots because those are uh, really not very sensitive uh, probably use some like five or six turn ones 
And uh, as you can see underneath those spring clips, that's the um, overheat sensor there. Uh, I guess it's thermistor. Uh, it gets hot and um, it doesn't want to blow the fuse. It will actually um, cut the power out. So oh, yeah, this is uh, made by Elna. Um, it's out of an old Pioneer, but uh, everybody used Elna back then in the Japanese stuff because it was the best. Anyway, I hope that wasn't too long-winded. That's what we're going to be working on soon. Um, focus, please. But yeah, that's that's going to be going probably in the Marantz here because it runs off a similar power supply. And thanks, guys, for watching. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Leave you with a little temptations. Yeah, that's not going to sound so good. I'm going to go back to the... Uh, bows here this does not have like a speaker protect circuit on it so i really don't i haven't been using it much lately in a lot of videos i've been using the, the bose stuff which was also out of a dump but it sounds great there's a video i think on that but um so yeah i'm not really keen on these right here are about 900 bucks a piece uh not really keen on um hooking those up to anything without a some kind of a relay protect circuit so uh we're gonna get which the Sansui has and the Pioneer and some of the other stuff. We're gonna get the Fisher and that other stuff out and check it out soon. Let you guys check it out. I guess this is turning into a semi audiophile uh, channel. I need to get some more tube stuff going. I've got way too many tubes um, not to be using, but I haven't run across any tube stuff lately. And everything I got this tube right now works. <sighs> oh well, not a bad problem to have, I guess, in some ways. Take care, y'all. We'll talk to you soon. All right, later.